Hello everyone, welcome to week five. Congratulations uh, for making it to week five. So we're officially in the second half of our eight week course, okay? Now as I record this, it's actually um, Friday, so uh, I haven't actually received your midterms yet. Hopefully you did okay. Okay, remember I am gonna do a kind of go through video for that, so hopefully it's already posted. Okay, so take a look at that, see how you did on that midterm. Any questions, remember, come to an office hour, okay? I'm only getting a few people at office hours, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, right? Because if you're getting it, fantastic, there's no need to come to an office hour, but if you're not really picking up what I'm putting down and you're not coming to an office hour and fixing the problem, that could be an issue, okay? So um, make sure uh, if you need to go through any of that material on the midterm, Office hour will be on Thursday, okay. Now then, we're gonna look at uh, the next packet, which is acid-base reactions, okay. Now the good news is that because you did that titration and we've talked about ionic compounds a little bit, well, a lot, <laughs> right? Acid-base reactions are typically double replacements featuring an acid and a base, okay. Acids and bases themselves are, when dissolved, ionic compounds, although the kind of the catch-22 with acids, and this is why they have that weird naming thing, right, is that they're pure state molecular, dissolved state ionic, all right? Bases, always ionic, right? But acids have this dual personality, hence the weird name thing. Okay, so let's just go through some simple stuff. All right, so acids and bases are special in two, two ways. Real simple, what, acids? Well, if you like, acid, acids contain H plus ions, or a better way to think about it would be they create H plus ions in solution. Okay, so the, the acidic taste, the sour taste, is the dissolved H plus ion, right? Okay. So I'm gonna write contain or make H plus aqueous ions. All right, that's what acids do, okay? So HCl dissolves to make H plus and Cl minus. The H plus dissolved is the hydrogen ion, the, H, the acidic ion, all right? Bases, similar, contain or make OH minus aqueous ions, upper ions, okay? As we'll see later, some Acids make one H plus, some make two, occasionally three. Similarly, bases, some make one OH, some make two, some make three. Okay, so they make a, each kind of formal unit makes an H plus or H pluses if it's an acid. Each formal unit makes an OH minus or OH minuses if it's a base. Okay, now, acids, to complicate the story even a little bit more. Okay, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. Okay, so in the pure state, as we mentioned, they're molecular. So if I went and got some pure HCl, okay, it would be in a cylinder, it would be a gas, a molecular gas, right? So that's how it is in the pure state. If I got some sulfuric acid, and sometimes it's called fuming sulfuric acid, right? It's actually a liquid in the pure state. So gases and liquids, not giant ionic compounds, right? They're molecular, okay? So that room temperature, that gases and liquids, and that's kind of a giveaway. Something that's a gas or a liquid at room temperature is probably molecular. Okay, so that's what they are in the pure state, but when they dissolve, okay, we can do a little, uh, this is basically um, how we make HCl stomach acid, right, essentially. When you bubble that gas through water, okay, we can maybe write excess H2O here. Okay, when you bubble that hydrogen chloride HCl through water, it dissolves to make H plus and Cl minus dissociated bubble ions, right, electrolytes, okay? That's the acidic proton, that's what's due to acid, okay? However, now think about it just for a second, think about it just for a second, what is the H plus ion? Think about hydrogen, element number one, right? So it has one proton, one electron. If I remove that electron to make H plus, what am I left with? A single proton with no kind of outside electrons. Now remember, the nucleus was point zero zero one percent of the volume of an atom so that naked proton is super 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 tiny and it has a relatively large size a uh, relatively large charge right so it's extremely polarizing okay so this thing actually cannot exist in nature so what actually happens the h plus hops onto a water molecule to make what's called the hydronium ion okay 
I'll draw it as a Lewis structure so you guys can see it, okay? So we'll get on to Lewis structures more later, okay? And that's the hydronium ion, and we put a box around it and call it plus. So think of water a bit like a passenger, sorry, think of water a bit like a ferry boat, and think of H plus a bit like a passenger. The H plus can't go anywhere unless it's kind of taking a ride on water, right? Okay, so nice way to remember this, it's like a piggyback. Here are two nerds in a mating ritual. <laughs> sorry, that's a joke, nerds don't mate. Okay, that's a joke. <laughs> okay, so think of the hydronium ion as the actual thing that's responsible for acidity, okay? The H plus jumps on the ferry boat and gets taken around and then it kind of jumps off when it needs to, okay? So there is no such thing as H plus aqueous, no such thing. It's actually H3O, let's write the formula. H3O, and we write it like that. That's the formula of the hydronium ion, hydronium. So whenever you see that, that's a lie. Okay, there's no such thing as H plus aqueous. I know we write it all the time, but it's really H3O plus. Okay, just so you know that. Okay, now that's the weird life story of acids, yeah. Now, as we mentioned, you should be able to write now, hopefully the names and formulas of any acid and base, okay. You should be moving on to the true acid names around now. Okay, so if I said to you, what's the formula of hydrochloric acid, H plus Cl minus, plus one minus one, HCl, good to go. If I said to you what's the formula of sodium hydroxide, Na plus OH minus, NaOH, good to go. Okay, fill out the rest. I'm gonna drink this coffee. All right. Okay, nitric acid, H plus NO3 minus, plus one minus one. Now remember, if it's one molecular ion, you can drop brackets. Okay, that's what you'd see in the book. I like to kind of remind myself it's a molecular ion. Calcium hydroxide, be careful. We saw this one in the last packet. Plus two, minus one, so I need two of them. Okay, right. Sulfuric acid, SO4, two minus, I need two H pluses. Potassium hydroxide, plus one, minus one. You can write it either with or without brackets like that. Okay. Now here's an interesting question, okay, here's an interesting question. Of these acids and bases, which is the quote unquote strongest? It's interesting, right? So when these things dissolve in water, they dissociate to make ions, right? And it's the H plus ion that's acidic and the OH minus ion that's basic, right? So we saw it with HCl up here, yeah? So I make H plus and Cl minus. So I get one H plus, if you like, per vehicle. But look at this guy here, sulfuric acid. If I do sulfuric acid, okay, H2SO4, when it breaks apart, it makes 2H plus plus SO4, 2 minus, okay? So you're getting 2H plus passengers per vehicle. If the acid, if all these are the same strength, one mole per liter, right? There's one mole of this, one mole of this, and one mole of this in a liter, right? But when it dissociates, I actually get two moles of H plus versus one versus one. So this is called a diprotic acid. This is called monoprotic, okay? So twice the bang for the buck because there's two H pluses per molecule, two H plus passengers per vehicle. That's why sulfuric acid is probably the most widely produced chemical in the world because it gives you the most H plus for the money, so to speak, okay. Over here, we can have dibasic as well. That gives me one OH, that gives me one, that gives me two. Calcium hydroxide is a very popular lab reagent because it gives you two OHs per formula. It's twice as strong, if you like, in hydroxide. So we use that a lot in lab if you want a real basic solution, okay. So, let's move forward. So I mentioned it here, right? <laughs> Okay, so we have monoprotic acids dissociate to give 1H+, plus. that would be HCl for example. Kind of in the interest of speed, I'm writing it like that. Okay, diprotics give you two. So H2, SO4 goes to 2H+, plus, plus SO4, two minus. Awesome. Awesome. Now then, interestingly, acids, because they have that molecular character, they don't fall apart to make everything all at once. They actually undergo consecutive dissociation steps, right? So if I have my, or sequential, we can use the word sequential. Sequential, right? So these are called polyprotic 
specifically di two, right? So poly means many. I can have mono di and tri. Di and tri would be poly, polyprotic acids, okay? So first, the molecule loses one H plus, and that's what's left if you think about it, right? And then this stuff goes on to make another H plus with this iron, yeah? Now, here's an interesting fact. When we see this in math, they're called simultaneous equations, right? But, and you can add equations to make kind of a net equation, all right? So what I want you guys to do, keep all the reactants to one side, all the products to another. So add these two together, put them here. Add these two, to, two together, put them here. And then we'll get the net equation, right? I think it's something we've seen before. Okay, so let's do it. H2SO4 aqueous plus, this is called the hydrogen sulfate ion. Okay. Turns into one, two H pluses. Plus HSO4 again. Okay, anything cancel? Ah, having a flashback to net ionic equations, right? So yeah, the hydrogen sulfate cancels. What are we left with? The familiar net. Okay, so H2SO4 turns into 2H plus plus SO4, 2 minus. Okay, now somewhat similarly, not identically similarly, but we have, you know, dibasic and monobasic alkalis or hydroxide compounds, right? However, they are strong electrolytes, all right? So they dissolve completely. So no partial, they just completely dissolve. So we can just write it like we would any other salt. One step, dissolves straight away. There we go. All right, so acids, again, they are a bit weird, right? We talked about their molecular character coming in. That's how the molecular character plays into this kind of situation, okay? It doesn't act like a pure ionic. It does it kind of sequential steps. That's because it's got that molecular character. Whereas bases, they're just pure ions, all right? Now, interesting question. So we're gonna talk about strong versus weak right, in terms of acids and bases. Now, <clears throat> if I had a one mole per liter strength hydrochloric acid solution, that's basically stomach acid, right? So your stomach acid essentially dissolves all the food you eat, right? So it dissolves like organic things, all right? So if you spill an acid on yourself, you get a, a chemical burn, right? Because it will essentially dissolve pretty much anything. So acids dissolve pretty much everything, including metals, all right? You can dissolve metals with acids, which is kind of interesting, okay? So acids are super dangerous, as we kind of sort of know, right? Okay. Um, that's because there's lots of H plus, right? So the more H plus there is, the more H plus to react. Away we go, right? So HCl, super strong, right? However, if I had one mole per liter vinegar, which is a weak acid, so it's the same number of molecules of acid, right? I can put that on my fish and chips and it tastes awesome, right? I, I don't burn a hole in my throat if I drink vinegar. <laughs> it's the same concentration as HCl yet it's not as potent, right? It's not as reactive. That must mean there's less H+. How can that be? Well, for a strong acid, there's basically more H+, and for a weak acid, there's basically less, even though there's the same number of molecules, right? And to show you this, I'm gonna do what's a, an ICF table, right? Now, I haven't got room to do it here, so I recommend you do it on a separate piece of paper. Okay, so I'll show you the simple one first, and this is kind of common sense, right? So if I take HCl, yeah, and I'm going to do a one direction arrow, it makes H plus and Cl minus. That's indicative of complete dissociation. So I have an initial condition, a change, and a final, hence ICF, right? Okay, so think about this. If I have a hundred HCl molecules, right? Maybe they're in the gas phase and I've got them in a cylinder, right? And then I bubble them through water, just like we talked about before, right? Initially, 
before I start the bubbling, there's no H plus and no Cl minus there, right? And then I put my 100 molecules of HCl in the water and it completely breaks apart, right? So if you like, those 100 molecules break apart, so I lose 100. So it's like having 100 cars, each car with two passengers, right? So think about it, 100 cars, a guy and a girl in each car. All the cars stop and everybody gets out, right? So I've got no intact cars. Hey, there's 100 guys and 100 girls, H plus and Cl minus, in 100 cars with two people, yeah? So that's the change, right? The cars stop, everybody gets out. That's called 100% or complete dissociation. The final situation, well, what have we got? We got no intact HCl, none. There's no intact HCl, right? And I've got 100% if you like H plus and 100% Cl minus. So I start with 100 molecules of HCl. I end with 100 molecules of, or 100 ions of H plus, okay? So that's 100% or complete dissociation. It's a one-to-one. -one. For every acid molecule, I get a H plus ion. Okay, and we see that here, right? So if I show you the, back to the picture, if I can find my, oh, it's underneath. <laughs> so if I go here, okay. So maybe I'll uh, show you the picture, right? So there we have separate mobile ions in solution. This looks like one, two, three, four. <laughs> one, two, three, four. So I took four HCl and they completely broke apart to make four H plus and four Cl minus, okay. All right, now, fair enough. Now vinegar, okay, vinegar has the formula H and then some organic molecules, C2H3O2. Now the trick is to write it just like a regular old acid, so, you know, HA, right? Okay, H plus some anion, right? H plus some anion. It just so happens that organic anions are molecules that contain H, H's in them. They're not acidic protons, they're trapped inside a molecule, okay? But there is one acidic proton. So I write the acidic proton first, and then the anion second. It's a generic formula, okay? So when this falls apart, that'll make H+, plus, and this will make a minus ion called the acetate ion. Okay, now here's the thing. When I dissolve this in water, I'm gonna write a special symbol, a double-headed arrow, which means it only partially dissociates. Now, here's a little mission for you guys, right? If you go to the kitchen, find some vinegar, right? And on the back, it might say something like 10% acidity. What does that mean? Well, it's not 100% dissociated like here. If you had a bottle of HCl in the cupboard, it would say 100% acidity, right? It says 10%. And that means one in 10 molecules breaks apart. Oh, interesting, right? So let's do our same thing. Okay, so vinegar breaks apart to make H plus and it's anion, right? Again, we'll start with 100 molecules to make life easy. Before I put any in there, there's none of the products. I haven't put it in yet, I'm just about to throw it in, right? And then, hey, it's 10% dissociated, so 10 cars stop and people get out, right? So 10 out of the 100 cars stop, how many guys get out? Well, 10 cars, two people per car, 10 guys, 10 girls. Now look at the change, right? So the change, we lose 10, we gain 10. Hey, 10 from 100 is 90. 90% 90 of those vinegars are intact still, right? Because they haven't liberated their proton, they're not acidic, right? And then, hey, 0 plus 10, 10, and 10. So we call that 10% acidic, right? Because 10 out of 100 molecules broke apart to make free H plus ions. Ah, that's called partial dissociation. So this is called a strong electrolyte. This one is strong. Strong electrolytes completely break apart 100%. This is a weak, a weak electrolyte or a weak acid, okay? It only partially dissociates. That's why vinegar tastes great and it's not advised to drink HCl, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's go back here. Let's recap what it says on the sheet. So strong mineral acids, as we just shown you, dissociate 100%. So if it's got one of those classic, what we call mineral kind of anions, things that aren't organic, Cl minus, NO3, right? It's strong, 100% breaks apart. Those are the ones we use in lab. Those are the ones I got on the data sheet, right? Okay. However, weak acids, organic, because it's got carbon, hydrogen, sometimes oxygen in the anion, 
Okay. Weak acids undergo partial dissociation, right? So you get a low amount of H plus in solution. Fantastic. So here's the picture. So if we look at the picture here. There's an intact vinegar molecule, right? That's the acidic proton right there. Okay. There's an anion, there's an H plus. So as you can see, two from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two from nine have dissociated, right? So that's a little bit more than we would expect. It's just an example. All right. So hopefully you understand partial dissociation, kind of a neat kind of thing. Okay, so discussion, the student measures a pH of equal volumes of 0.5 molar HCl and 0.5 molar acetic acid. Which solution would you expect to have the lower pH, i.e. be more H plus, right? So low pH equals more H plus, right? Therefore, HCl pH is approximately 1.0. It's a very low, right? So if you remember the pH scale, maybe you've seen it before, anything below 7 is acidic. The lower the number, the more acidic. So HCl, pH 1, very, very acidic. Stomach acids around pH 1, okay? H, C2, H3, O2. If you measure the concentration of vinegar, it's about 2.8. Okay. Still acidic still less than seven, but not as low as HCl. Now you think, oh, that's not much of a difference, but this is pH and we'll talk about it later. pH is actually a log scale, right? So it's a power of 10 thing. So something raised to the power of one is much smaller number than something raised to the power of 2.8, for example, right? So don't be confused by what look like small differences in pH, meaning a strength difference that's small, it's not, okay? So there's actually a big difference in concentration because of log math. We'll get to that later. All right. So the bottom line is, here's the trick. Strong mineral acids give the best bang for the buck. They give you the most H+. Bases two, so calcium hydroxide is a strong base, gives you the most OH-. Okay, so they're often used as lab reagents. So H2SO4, calcium hydroxide, what are what you'll find in lab because they're both strong electrolytes. They both completely dissolve and they have multiple passengers per formal unit. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> so we did acids. Acids are in, in some ways a little easier when we talk about weak acids, okay? Because there is such a thing as a weak base. Now the classic is ammonia, right? Okay, so let's talk about ammonia. Ammonia, if you want a very gentle base in lab, you'll use ammonia solution, right? And it's kind of like a, a little trick they play the stock room, right? They'll write that. How on earth can that be a base, right? There's no OHs in it, right? How can it break apart to make something with an OH ion in solution? It can't, it has no OHs, yet ammonia gas, if you dissolve ammonia gas in water, it will be basic. So it is making OH minus ions. So let's talk about this particular example, right? So you may have noticed in lab, well, we haven't been in lab, but hey, you'd notice this. You may have noticed in lab that aqueous ammonia is used as a gentle base, right? How can this be? It doesn't have any OH minus ions in it. All right. So the answer is it cannot dissociate directly to make OH minus. I mean, how can it, right? There's no OHs in its formula. It can't fall apart to make OHs, right? Okay. Therefore, actually I'm gonna do the explanation down here. Must react with water to make OH minus. That's the trick, okay? So ammonia, and literally anything with a nitrogen atom and it's organic will do this, right? So amines maybe you've heard of, right? That kind of fishy smell is, you know, like some fish has gone off, that's the amine smell, right? You've probably smelled ammonia, kind of cleaning solution, and then try and think to yourself, oh, cleaning solution, rotten fish. Somewhat smells the same, right? Because it's, it's um, organic ammonia, okay? Organic nitrogen, I should say. All right, so how on earth does it react with the water to make hydroxide while well, we do it, right? So NH3 I'll put gas because 
you know, you bubble this through water. Ammonia is a, this is a gas, right? And then we'll add it to water. Now I guess in this equilibrium, it doesn't all turn into the products, right? It's a partial, so it's going to be weak because it's a fraction that will do this, right? NH4, OH. I'll write it as that, right? Plus one, minus one, aqueous. Now that, of course, will break apart to form NH4 plus ammonium and OH minus hydroxide. So that's called ammonium hydroxide. All right. Okay. So if you like, I can take this down here and do an ICF table with it, right? All right. So if I take my equilibrium, now I'm going to take this. So let's pretend we form this, right? We've made some product, all right? It gets into an equilibrium with, or it partially breaks apart to form this two ions, right? The separate mobile ions. Ah, look what we just made, right? OH minus, yeah? All right, so if I start with 100 of these, initially zero and zero, it's like uh, the vinegar, right? So they won't all break apart some fraction. Let's choose a different fraction. Let's choose 5%, right? So maybe five out of 100 break apart. I get plus five of these, plus five of these. So ammonium hydroxide may be 95% undissociated, right? But that 5% that breaks apart makes OH minus. So I've got five OHs rather than 100 for NaOH, say. All right, or five OHs rather than 200 for uh, calcium hydroxide. Okay, so that's a weak base. Okay, all right. So hydroxide ions in small amounts make great solvents, right? This is where we have ammonia cleaning solutions, right? So if you check those kind of big tubs of <laughs> cleaning stuff, ammonia solution, all right. Okay, so it's kind of a joke <clears throat> from the stock room when they provide a weak base, we want a little bit of OH minus, that's their joke because it's not really that that gives you the OH, it gets into this situation to make OH, okay? So the bottle may be labeled that, but the bottle should be labeled NH4OH, <laughs> because that makes that, right? Oh, sorry. The bottle should be labeled NH4OH because that with water makes that. Stockroom jokes, sometimes a little bit esoteric. <laughs> All right. Now, time's pushing on. I'm about to come to my uh, 29 minute limit. So I'll pause briefly, come back right away to finish off this packet as one video. Okay, so now for something you're familiar with, right? So if you did that HCL lab, this will be very straightforward. It's just a reminder, it's just formalize it in the notes, right? So neutralization reactions, as seen during your acid plus base titration, you know, as kind of advertised, acid plus base, the undergo neutralization that makes salt plus water, okay? So the classic word equation, we've seen it before, acid plus base, anything with an H plus is an acid, anything with an OH minus is a base, turns into salt plus water via a double replacement mechanism, right? Okay, so generically, H plus on the front, don't care what's on the back, that's an acid. A base, don't care what's on the front as long as it's a plus ion. Metals are usually what we see, Na plus, K plus, right? And then OH on the back. Swap partners to make, well, the metal and the non-metal go together. A metal and a non-metal is called a salt, right, plus. You've seen this before, I like to combine it like that, right? You'll see H2O in the book. But uh, I write to, like to write HOH because it helps me balance equations, yeah? Because I'm just going to count the number and type of ions both sides. If I kind of specify that water's made from OH stuck to an H+, plus and they came from the acid and the base, it's easy to balance. Okay, so we'll do the easy one first. It's one you've seen before. We do the, because they're ionic reactions in solution, we can do the complete equation. We can do the regular balanced and the net, okay? So balanced complete and that. Beware when you do this in the book, right? Um, sometimes they call the balanced equation in the book, the molecular equation. This is ions. I don't get it either, but hey, I like to call it the balanced equation, just a regular equation. But in the book, sometimes they're called molecular. Okay. So balanced, complete and net. So 
hydrochloric acid, sodium hydroxide. So hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus sodium hydroxide, NaOH, turns into, swap the partners, sodium chloride, plus one, minus one. Remember, two-step process. We know that's aqueous, right? Maybe we look at our solubility chart, but common sense tells us that. H plus and OH minus makes water. In the book, they'll write H2O. I like to write it like that. Is it balanced? Yes. One sodium, one sodium. One hydroxide, one hydroxide. One H plus, one H plus, one chloride, one chloride. I like to count ions. Okay. Now, everything is aqueous apart from water. This is where it gets interesting. If you remember when we did um, those three equations before, balance complete and net, I said, hey, anything that's aqueous, you can split apart. And then I said, well, that means what? Anything that's not aqueous has to stay together. Water, it's liquid. It's not split apart. It's a liquid, okay? So solids, liquids, and gases are written intact. Okay, so remember that, and that's the little trick with neutralizations, all right? So what have we got? H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous, all right? Now remember, when they're split apart, you gotta write them with the charge. The charge like re-emerges. People lose lots of points on these because when they're separate mobile ions, they forget to write the charge. There's a big difference between H and H plus, right? Okay, yeah. Here, Na plus, OH minus. Turns into, that's aqueous. Na plus, Cl minus. Oh, that's intact, right? I'll write it as regular if you like. There we go. All right. Now, so there's our balanced and complete. Net, of course, is where the action is. Well, what cancels? That does. That does. Here's the trick. Neutralization is a special. Remember, we learned those five times of five types of reaction, and neutralization was really just a double replacement. Well, why not just lump it in with the double replacements? Because it's special, right? Every neutralization has the same net, okay? I take an H+, which is like this, you know, super powerful acidic material, right? And then I take an OH-, which is like a super powerful caustic material, yin and yang of the universe, right? These two super powerful things. One's a Sith, one's a Jedi, right? I'll let you decide which one's which, right? And they turn into what? H2O liquid, okay? Key fact, all neutralizations have the net, same net ionic equation. H plus and OH minus makes H2O. That's why it's called neutralization. Super acidic, super basic, combined to make neutral water. Ah, interesting, okay. Now, <clears throat> here's a summary. So this, you know, is a nice microscopic view of what just went on. I won't dwell on it because this is stuff you've kind of seen before. But uh, it is nice because they've written H plus as H3O plus. There's a nice picture of it, right? Okay, so H plus and Cl minus in HCl, Na plus, OH minus in NaOH. Throw them in together. They make salt plus water. The waters, if you like, disappeared into the... Oh, move it up. If you like, the waters disappeared off into the background. You just made seawater. You just made salt water. Okay, there we go. And there's the equation. All right. Now, you guys are expert at titrations now, but it, you know, it, it's always good to kind of have it in your notes as kind of a formal thing. All right. So it, this is essentially every acid-base titration. Okay, and it's the same one we kind of did virtually with uh, KHP, NaOH and HCl, NaOH. Now, when you did that lab, you always had OH minus ions or NaOH in the burette, okay? Because acids down here with an indicator are colorless. So when we use this phenol phthalene indicator, which is colorless in acid and pink in base, oh, that's cool. <laughs> right when it changes, they're equal, right? So imagine you've got H pluses down here, yeah? and OH minus is up here. As one OH minus falls in, it reacts with an H plus to make a water, right? So you just keep adding and adding and adding and the, the H pluses get removed, removed, removed. So H plus in the bottom plus an OH minus 
goes to H2O. When that last OH minus drops in to take away the last H plus, bang, it changes color, right? At that point, its pH will be neutral because there's no excess acid or base, right? Okay, we call that the equivalence point, which is what we talked about. So that's why we stop right when it changes color because at that point, they're exactly equal. Then hey, one acid, one base in our, in our balanced equation is satisfied and we can do, hey, moles equals moles, or as we know for solutions now, moles is CV. So concentration times volume of acid equals concentration times volume of base. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's important, okay? You can only use CV equals CV if it's one-to-one. -one. We'll see a more complex example in a second. But for our titrations from our experiment, this was true because both KHP and HCl were monoprotic and NaOH was monobasic, so yeah, it worked. Okay, all right, so that's a recap of your lab. Hopefully that makes sense, okay. And you know, there's an actual picture, right? So you're adding base to acidic solution with phenolphthalein. As you approach the end point, you know, as you approach the end point, because if you think about it, when that drop of uh, sodium hydroxide hits the surface of the water, or well, solution rather, there's a high local concentration, so you get kind of flashes of color, right? And then you swirl it and it goes away as it dissolves in, right? So you know when you do this titration for real, this is why actual labs are important, right? Because you can't do this virtually yet. So when you do this titration, you start to get flashes, flashes, flashes of color, and that tells you to slow down and you adjust the stopcock so it's like one drop per second or something. A drop goes in, you get a flash, you swirl it, it goes away. Drop goes in, flash, goes away. Drop goes in, Flash, stays, stop. <laughs> so you can get to within one drop, right? And a drop is a 15th of a milliliter. So you're accurate to a 15th of a milliliter with titrations if you do them right. Cool. So the last drop goes in, it stays solid. Record the volume of sodium hydroxide added to the nearest 15th of a milliliter, and you're good. Okay. So, as we mentioned, titrations are a specific example of slides and ladders. Okay. If it's an easy one to one, CV equals CV. But as they kind of alluded to in the pivot video, and I mentioned uh, just previously in the last packet, I think, you've got to be careful because if stoichiometry is not one-to-one, -one, CV, CV doesn't work. Okay, so let's look at this example. If you can do this example, you definitely understand titrations, right? Okay, so what volume of 0.128 molar HCl is needed to neutralize 2.87 grams of magnesium hydroxide. So magnesium hydroxide is a solid, right? So we're going to have in our table to figure out moles of this guy, grams, molecular weight, and moles, right? Okay. HCl is aqueous, so that's going to be concentration, volume, and moles. Ah, now, let's read the question, okay? So, the question says, what volume of 0.128 molar HCl? So that's, oh, first things first, right? <laughs> Probably the most important thing. This isn't balanced, right? So I've got a magnesium, I've got a magnesium. I've got two hydroxides. If I write that as HOH, I need two HOHs, right? That leaves me with two H pluses, two H pluses, two CLs, two CLs. Those are the balancing numbers, okay? All right. So oftentimes, we mentioned this before, it's a nice little trick. That's a plus two iron. And these are all plus one, minus one. When I've got ones and twos in charges, I get ones and twos in balancing numbers. So two, one, one, two. Okay. Now, not one to one, so we can't do CV equals CV. Should this have been two solutions? All right. Now, let's go through it. So what volume of 0.128 molar? 0.128 moles per liter volume is needed to neutralize 2.87 grams of magnesium hydroxide. Hey, magnesium hydroxide, look in the old periodic table. Hydroxide is 16 plus 1.01. Two of those plus magnesium, I think it's 24 or something. Answer, I'm just looking on the side here, 58.3 grams per mole. Okay, so we want this, right? So we gotta climb down, slide across, climb up to here. Okay, it's a bit like that one with the chalk we did with the HCl, right? Climb down, 0 0.049 moles. One of these reacts with two of these, so that times two. This is why CV equals CV doesn't work, because you have this two factor now, right? Okay, this is dibasic, this is monoprotic. I need twice as many 
single vehicle passengers than I do double vehicle passengers, double passenger in the vehicles. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> two two OHs in one, one H plus in here. So I need twice as many of these. Okay, times it up by two, 0.098. And then you know, just like before, I'm left with this, right? So concentration, move it up. Concentration moles per volume in liters. I want volume, which equals moles 0 0.098 over concentration 0 0.128 mole per liter. I have the answer, I just want to check it. Okay, 0 0.098 divided by 0 0.128 equals 0.76, 0 0.766, three sig figs, liters. Okay, that is 766 milliliters if you wanted milliliters. All right, there you go. Because it was not one to one, there's two OHs per vehicle, only one H plus per vehicle, I need two vehicles with one passenger rather than half as many with two passengers. There, got that right. <laughs> All right, nearly done. Nice short packet, this one. It's actually interesting. Some of the packets as we go forward will be a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna start probably doing three per week rather than two this week, for example. So um, last page. Now, one other word equation you should be familiar with is, and because we already did acid plus base makes salt plus water. Another one is acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and CO2. Now, if you've ever taken a, geology class, right? This is like the one chemical equation they use in geology. Well, probably more than one, but this is a popular one. Because if you have limestone, which is calcium carbonate essentially, or marble, which is calcium carbonate too, essentially, acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and CO2. So you put some uh, acid on a piece of limestone and it will fizz. That's how you know in the field if it's limestone. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at that. So it's a sequential process just like before, okay? So it's acid plus base, make salt plus water, right? But then the product salt, so to speak, will decompose, all right? So in terms of just a simple word equation, just copying this down and translating. So acid plus carbonate. So I'm gonna do, I'll do carbonate first, all right? So I do it over here, carbonate. That's chalk, right? That's chalk. Plus acid, HCl. Now we've seen this many times, so I'm gonna kind of balance it on the fly. Turns into, We've seen this already, right? That's a salt, that's a water, and that's a CO2. Okay, so we've seen that multiple times already. Okay, so acid plus base makes salt plus water and CO2. Acid plus, so, say it again. Acid plus base does make salt plus water. Acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and CO2. There we go. All right, now, <clears throat> just like with the H2SO4, this is actually a sequential process, right? So we have, the first step is a double replacement between the, these two reactants, right? So these two reactants do a double replacement first. Two of these, one of these, makes one of those, two of those, all right? So we make what's called carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid will fall apart by itself to make carbon dioxide and water, okay? All right, now if we do that whole thing, and you can do this, add up the reactants, add up the products, and cancel any common terms, you'll get this net equation. So acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and carbon dioxide is a combination of two, but we always just write it as one. It'll be this one here. So 2HDL plus calcium carbonate plus H2CO3 turns into calcium chloride plus H2CO3 plus H2O plus CO2. What cancels? carbonic acid cancels, and we're left with this one. Okay, so just a little bit of a wrap up there with that equation. Acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and carbon dioxide, worth remembering, but in reality, it's a two-step process, two sequential steps. We make carbonic acid from a double replacement, and then we have a decomposition. So double replacement followed by decomposition explains acid plus carbonate makes salt, water, and carbon dioxide. Okay, stop there. 
we're done with this packet. I'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Okay.